I'd like to welcome Sara Escube, who is an equine marketing and communication expert. She was with us in September. Thank you for being us with, with us again, Sara. Sara presents the high reflection mar marketing since the September meeting. Hi, everyone. Okay, it works. Um, hello, happy to be here. The subject I'll focus uh, on the next 35 to 40 minutes will cover my field of expertise, uh, which is marketing and communication, and precisely we'll focus on the market marketing behind high reflection in equestrian sport. I'm so happy to be here seeing such a diverse group of indiv individuals gathered here today, all sharing a common passion and keen interest in understanding the intricate details in marketing and communication within our industry. So, as we delve further into our discussions today, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on the power of marketing and its profound influence on the public's perceptions beliefs and actions. So marketing in its essence is not merely about selling products or services. It's about shaping narratives, crafting identities and creating realities. It's about immersing a person, a market, in a world of images, videos and messages that were created for them in order to make them think a certain way, perceive reality a certain way and accept a certain reality as a truth. So, as I said, our focus today lies specifically on hyperflexion, but um, a practice that uh, science proved to be noxious for the horses, but often touted as a <laughs> symbol of power, competition and achievement in marketing. We're about to see that hyperflexion has become deeply entrenched in the communication and marketing material of our industry. So last year, we came to the conclusion that the image, images chosen by brands to advertise their products or show up online perpetuated a narrative in which high reflection was an expression and even a proof of hard work, worth and likely, likeliness to be successful in sports. We saw that the images that shape one's vision of the equestrian world and of the dressage world in particular where for a great majority pictures and videos of horses put in a state of hyperflexion and even broker in certain cases. Today, I want us to continue exploring the depths of equestrian marketing, but in order to do that, I would like to remind each and every one of us here and on the live stream that it, this is crucial for this exercise to approach the topic with an open mind, um, because we have to leave our own beliefs aside and what the situation as it is and as we would like it to be um, in order to just assess the situation. So, how marketing work? I won't do you the uh, long lecture. I just make a quick reminder here so I'm sure everybody can get a good grasp of what I said in this presentation. So marketing is described by many authors and specialists as the art of selling. I prefer to refer it as the science behind making people want to spend money. Marketing is a complex mix of sociology, psychology, economics and sales tactics. It is at the crossroads of many other disciplines and stirs them together to create the spark that makes people want to buy something. And to ignite that spark, you'll need five basic factors. Familiarity, attraction, simplicity, deliver de deliverability, and relatability. And what is one of the best ways to reunite these five factors easily? Images, videos, drawings, whatever is easy to access and that understand would work. So the easier, the better, visuals. Now, many studies show that a picture without context doesn't hit the same way. Um, than a picture that is contextualized with copywriting. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term yet, copywriting is a short brand salesy text that accompany um, pictures and visuals. It helps any prospect, customer or reader to bring more meaning and purpose to an image. 
A recent study published in June of 2023 by students in the Institute of Computer Science of Indonesia highlighted that good copywriting can enhance the appeal of the conveyed message and help achieve marketing objectives. Now, keep in mind that in a marketing objective is not necessarily to make one buy something, it is to make them want to buy th something or want to experience something, which is different. The marketing subject being very broad as it covers everything from print, radio, telly, the tiniest tag you'll find on a piece of clothing. I chose to concentrate onto one of the emerged part of the iceberg today, which is social media. So the question is now, what does a regular equestrian see first on social media? I'd like to tell you the story of a complete stranger this morning. And this complete stranger is going to be a beginning, beginner rider and he wants to practice dressage. He registers in a local riding facility to take lessons. And on his free time, he scrolls down social media for inspiration and additional knowledge. So this beginner might say, oh, I'll follow my Federation account. I'll find useful content. And off he goes, let's say he's French, onto the French Federation account. For equity's sake, let's say this rider only uses Instagram. This way, the panel of visuals and copy we're going to study is all created on the same platform over the same period, period of time. So the aim here is to give you just a glimpse of what someone who is a horse enthusiast, can come across on social media. So as I said, off he goes, but National Federation account. We'll be looking to different pictures and videos that showcase dressage, sorry, dressage picture as depicted by the French Federation. Every picture was posted by the French Federation on their account between 26th of March and 26th of April 2024. We'll be looking at one carousel, one reel, and one dressage picture. So, let's start with this carousel. For every asset we're going to study, we're going to look at recurrent elements and words used in the caption. So right now, no problem, right? When the French Federation speaks about dressage, what do they say? What do they show? If we look at the picture here, we'll be able to spot one smiling rider wearing a show jacket one plated horse stacked with a dove bridle. The copy, copy has some important keywords like smile, it's in French here, but like smile, three stars, like it's for Fontainebleau, um, and Paris 124 referring to the whole Olympics. That suggests this is a rider preparing to take part in the Olympics in Paris this year. And in this case, it's for power dressage. In the same carousel, nine more pictures help get help getting a better understanding of what dressage and hip power dressage should look like according to what pictures the Federation chose to showcase on their account. What do we learn from these pictures if we're a beginner rider on a federational account? We learn that dressage riders are smiling, they look happy. We learn that horses have their head low out of the arena or when walking and horses hold their head in a different manner when they are in the arena. I want to make a disclaimer here that we won't be qualifying hyperflexion in any of the, the pictures for now. We're just qualified the different positions of the head in the most neutral way possible. So now on to real, published by the French Federation this April. They just point out what the Federation shows to a regular horse rider that, that looks into their Instagram account. So from the beginning, we've seen one horse holding his head height and slightly curled in while, while in the arena, one coach, one more horse holding his head. And I'll let you watch, but just for the record, there's nine horses holding their heads high and slightly curled in while in the arena in this reel. So these pictures are not meant to show any good or bad marketing, right? It is just here to show what is currently showed by the Federation and what all beginner rider will see. 
you know what? Let's name him John, like for the sake of this presentation, it's going to be easier. So now John looks to one more picture on the French Federation account. What does, what does he see? Is he, he sees a plated horse, a smiling rider in a show jacket, and a horse that holds his, its head high and slightly curled in while being in the arena. The copy displays the word showcasing, which is um, like showcasing young riders, um, Europe Young Riders Champions, higher level and federal clinic and federal park. The question is now, what did John learn while browsing on the French Federation's Instagram? We're not making assumptions here, we're just, just hypotheses related to the pictures and text we saw. Dressage seems to be assimilated to a certain gear. In the arena, dressage horses seem to hold their head funny in comparison to other horses. And dressage riders seem to smile a lot and to be happy. Now let's say John want to, wants to know more about the word of dressage and decides to look up the FEI account. Thanks to Riyadh World Cup Finals, he's lucky enough to find plenty of dressage content. Let's see what our beginner rider, John, is going to see. So, John opens a dressage post. It is a causa showcasing five pictures of top names in the sport, as explained in the caption. Titans, even. What does John see from these perfect plated prancing ponies as shown by the FEI? He sees Focus Rider, Glitter Attack, Double Bridal, and this adds up with what he has seen before on the French Federation accounts. This builds familiarity and credibility. What else can he learn by swiping through the photos in this carousel? Top dressage riders look focused. Top dressage horses hold their heads a certain way. That way is quite different from other disciplines he can see on the FEI account and slightly curled in Y in the arena. Top dressage riders use double bridges. This is what we are able to see. Now John continues to browse the FEI account and watch this reel. Let's count what he sees. One horse holding his head high and slightly curled in while warming up, now two. And we're only on, already on the third. This is now four, five. One happy rider. Six. Seven, eight. And I'll spare you the counting for the rest of the video. So as explained by the caption, John is watching superstars in their hashtag pursuit of perfection. This keeps building his understanding of high level dressage as it should look and as it should be. Following up, he sees another reel. What's in it for John? One for Kissed Rider, one horse hold, holding his head high and slightly curled in, in, the, in, in the arena, one smiling rider, one horse hugging rider with one curled in horse that makes two of it. We've seen, we've seen these pictures in Eva's presentation a while ago. Um, and also a smiling rider. So still the FEI explains he's watching John is watching glittering performances of Grand Prix riders in their pursuit of perfection. So what did John learn through these images? As dressage levels become harder, horses seem to curl inside more. Dressage riders seem more focused as difficulty level rises, as you would expect any high level, top level sport um, person to be. 
international dressage riders seem to use only double bridle, have their horses curled in and wear glittery tag. That's in the information John gets. Now, while browsing onto the FEI account, John stumbles upon an influencers page that has been featured on one of Riyadh's publications. This influencer is working with the FEI on some events. So John thinks, why not go and have a look at it? That many followers aren't for nothing. Those are the pictures John is able to see when scrolling through, through the influencer account. I'll let you a minute to see them all. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, you may even pause and pinch your screen to zoom in. But for those of you who are here, well, you have to squint your eyes. I'm sorry. Okay. On to the second panel, still scrolling. John gets a better view of this influencer's work. He sticks to the dressage world he's been served from the beginning of his Instagram search on Federation's account. If you spotted them while I was presenting the pictures, some of those were marked with blue ticks. Blue ticks signal pictures that correspond to the images John has been exposed to both on the French Federation and the Interna International Federation's account. Those blue ticks represent 8 out of 12 photos of this influencer riding on this layout, which means 67% of the riding pictures you see here are close to the observations John made on the Federation's account. This influencer has more than 700,000 followers. This makes him a figure of authority, and this is authority, backed up by, by what John had been, had been previously seeing on official governing, governing bodies account. So, he scrolls down even more and watches this influencer's reel. What does he see here? Same as everywhere else, he sees focused rider, curled in horse, and dressage gear, just as seen and shown in FEI and FFE pictures and videos. So, John, feeling inspired, will keep watching this influencer's account onto a second reel. And oh, look, now there are two. It's a sponsored video for a brand. We can see Focus Riders, Dressage Gear, and Curls in Horses, still as shown on the FFE and FEI pages. This brand must be trustworthy. John is going to look this brand further up in a minute. But I'll let you enjoy it a bit more. No, it's done. Okay. So, what did someone learn through these images? on this huge influencer's account. First, dressage riders seem to ride horses that are curled inside, no matter the level. Second, FEI seem to value this influencer by validating them and inviting them to events and cross-posting content with them. Cross-posting means they post content with both their accounts on top of it. And third, Brands that look trustworthy sponsor those people, so they must showcase good equitation. Let's take a minute to reflect on that and close the loop by looking into the sponsor's account. What can John learn on a brand's account? That brand that has more than 400k followers, so it must be very good, reckons John. That it's really his luck because there's a pinned video of one of their star riders right at the beginning of their account. So let's have a look at it. It's lovely. We start off in a beautiful bucolic environment. Flowers, this is lovely. As say the caption, this is a story of 
determination and the power of dreams, that no goal is too ambitious and that with dedication and passion, anything is possible. Ah, here we are. Typical curled in dressage horse as shown on every previous account. Military tag, impeccable arena. I mean, that must be perfect. Look at the horse, he seems so happy. And I think we're good. Ah, not yet. Yeah, let's say we're good. The whole video is available on Instagram anyway. So, just like that, John has learned what a dressage horse looks like. He's made his way through four accounts that have hundreds of thousands of followers and found a continuous, consistent, relevant image of dressage as depicted by governing bodies top dressage riders, influencers, and brands. So remember one of the first slides of this presentation? Remember the definition of marketing? Marketing is not about selling products or services. It's about shaping narratives, crafting identities, and creating realities. What's the reality created here? For John, dressage looks like something like this. Fancy gear, double bridle, and curled in horses. And just like John, you've been exposed to pictures along this presentation. These pictures, those, but also these ones, and those ones. That's 74 pictures along the course of 30 minutes or so of presentation or around 10 minutes of mindless scrolling on Instagram. So in 10 minutes, our friend John has absorbed 74 pictures that define and shape the world of dressage for him. But unlike John, who only believes what he sees and takes the authority figures as reliable sources of information, you might have been able to spot positions that are harmful for the horses. Unfortunately for John, Dressage only has one face. John had no explanation, nowhere, that the high and slightly curled in horse he was looking at might be in pain. Even worse, the information he had was that this high and slightly curled in neck was a synonym for top level riders winning performance and achieving dreams. In drawn referential, Dressage has the face that was given to him by the marketing assets that were chosen, and I want to make an emphasis on this word chosen, by federations, riders, influencers, and brands. So he has now a crystal clear idea of what dressage should look like. And he even likes the fact that those glittery, sparkly, shiny, brilliant horses, as they said, hold their head funny. This is the dressage way. So at what is, John never wanted to harm any horse. John never wanted to encourage abuse. John was just a horse enthusiast that was fed a certain narrative. 
But from a neutral point of view, and according to what we know, is Asia beneficial or noxious for the athlete horse? For his body, for his lungs, for his trachea, his back, his bones, his vision, and every part of its body without forgetting his mind, John has told that good dressage happens mainly in noxious positions. And how could a position possibly be noxious when every winning athlete showcased on account uses it? Remember the 74 pictures layout I just showed you? Well, on the six pictures panel, only three depict neutral or beneficial situation for the horse. One only being from an actual dressage warm-up, the two others being moments of relaxation out of the arena. On this layout, three of seven pictures showcased beneficial position, none of them during an actual test. And on this 21 pics layout, where we do have more luck, only eight pictures are considered being pictures of a horse in a neutral to beneficial position. Last chance, last panel. Well, now that's worse <laughs> because there are only four pictures out of 21 that are considered being pictures of a horse in a neutral to beneficial position. So, out of 73 pictures you've seen this morning, one of them being taken out because it was not showing a horse, 55 showcased situations that were harmful to the horse. This is 75.34%. This is three out of four photos on Federation's accounts, perpetrating a narrative around dressage that englobes hyperflexion as something totally normal, that makes it part of the package of being a good dressage rider. And that makes John and hundreds or thousands of riders around the globe thinking that this is okay, Everybody does this. This is a conformation matters anyway. This is a vision. This is top dressage. You wouldn't understand. And if it was harmful, top riders wouldn't do it. And this takes root directly into our governing bodies. This resistance to see the truth is deeply entrenched in our marketing system. The equestrian industry as a whole created, created this reality and never modified it. Even worse, they chose to, say, to stay inside this narrative to keep believing what they've been seeing, hearing and understanding for years. And I don't blame people. Change is scary. In fact, the fear of the unknown is the worst enemy of marketing. But this is a lesson for another time. What's important here is... Federations, societies, trainers, riders, influencers, brands, professionals, we all put different bits of reality out there, even more so with social media as a tool. We all propose a different version of truth, the one that suits us the most. That's normal, that's fine, that's human, but that's not an excuse. We are responsible for this reality. We are responsible for the way people respond to what they are exposed to. We are responsible for what we create and what we choose, and I insist on choose again, to perpetuate. And we must take accountability for what is broken in our system and repair it. Although, in a word of problem, I'm willing to bring solutions. There's already material to do better. You, as brands or federation, have it. We've seen it. There's plenty of riders out there wanting to make a change, waiting for judges to be impartial again, for rules to be applied 
again for horses to be heard again. As we gather here today, exactly 90 days away from the Olympics in Paris, it is mandatory that we consider the implication of our marketing choices, not only for sports or our industry, but for the welfare of all horses. We must ensure that the images that are projected uphold the value of integrity, respect and compassion that lie at the heart of, of all sports. We must all start to look at what we've been doing for years and accept that we are now able to do better and that we should. We didn't know back then, we know now. Let's do better. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you very much.